more details available with Srinjoy Chaudhary. It may not just have been Mirage, uh, but other uh, aircraft uh, also. Srinjoy, yes. elaborate. What, what have you been told by your sources? Rahul, it's very clear. The Mirages were definitely used and they were used for dropping the bombs. So they were used in a ground attack cap uh, capacity. Now, while a ground attack is going on and the planes are hitting the targets, uh, you need other aircraft, you need other fighter planes uh, to ensure that they are protected and they are allowed to do the job they are doing. So this is for air superiority. The air superiority is to ensure that Pakistani Air Force planes do not, in, in, uh, uh, do not interfere uh, and strike down uh, the mirages while they are targeting. So other planes of the Indian Air Force were also used. What we are hearing from top sources in the government that the Air Force packet, uh, the, the, uh, the word that is used being used is package or packet uh, of planes were used, one for the targeting, uh, one for the ground attack, one for the air superiority to ensure that the other planes, that the other planes of the Pakistan Air Force do not interfere with the attack. And that happened in Balakot. Apparently, the Balakot attack has been completely successful. Uh, the armed forces are very happy with the result of the bombing. Uh, the targets have been totally destroyed. And there is great satisfaction that all the, uh, all the targets that were put on the ground have been hit and there has been a successful uh, completion of the entire operation in Balakot. Okay, Rahul. well, Srinjoy, that's very, very important. You're saying that the Sukhois flew to give cover. Sukhois Absolutely. flew to give cover to the Mirages. The Mirages carried out the bombing run. The Sukhois ensured that the Pakistan Air Force jets, if at all, scrambled or any anti-aircraft fire would be neutralized and not targeted at the Mirage. Very, very interesting. I want to go across to Maruf. Maruf, uh, this is uh, what, uh, in fact, we were being told a short while back by uh, Air Marshal Alu Alia. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Air Marshal Aluwaria is actually uh, uh, a veteran of flying mirages. I mean, he led the mirage strikes in Kargil. He was one of the officers who brought the mirages to India from, uh, the Fra from France when we initially bought them. So he knows that equipment. But what we have today is essentially, uh, A, we have an equipment which is far more upgraded than what you saw in Kargil. So while it achieved great efficacy in Kargil, what you have today is an aircraft which is Mirage 2000-I, which is the Indian variant in which we've added radars, we've added further uh, uh, fire and forget missiles, we've added long-range visual capability. All yeah, that makes one, it uh, one, twice as capable as what we had seen earlier. And the second thing, Sukhoi's point about air cover, it is uh, classically in air operations, air cover is provided. Uh, to ensure that the pilot who is going on a mission-centric mode is not distracted by other aircrafts which come in to obviously foil his mission. So, it is, as I have been always saying, that operations have to be carried out in entirety. The Air Force knows its stuff. The Air Force has proved in two major exercises recently its capacity to handle multiple operational options and threats. One was the operations that it recently did, uh, this Vayu Shakti exercise that it carried out on the Rajasthan desert where it enthralled everybody with pinpoint accuracy. And prior to that, it had done, I think the exercise is called Vajra Shakti, where Air Force used all its capability to show India can simultaneously respond to multiple options. So if Pakistan is hoping that good friend China is going to bail it out, uh, I think it's uh, a long hope. Uh, quite clearly, India has hit targets. I have only one issue and that's about Balakot. Uh, I'm not sure if we would have ventured as far away as pa Khyber, Pakhtun, uh, Khyber Pakhtun Kawa because uh, that has two implications. One is, uh, I don't think that we have the radius of operation to carry out such long-range operations without refueling and in the timelines we are talking of this operation. And the second thing is, uh, when you extend your hits beyond the POK area, then it can be actually construed as an act of war. Right now, when you're hitting targets in POK area, you're hitting it into area which is India's territory. We've all along claimed it. Earlier governments have lacked the nerve to do it. And the second thing is you're hitting terror targets. Now, those who operate, if there are terror camps in Khaidar Pakhtunkhwa, they are not the targets that are hitting India. That Pakistan has set up 
to uh, unsettle the Americans and the Afghans. Okay. We do not want to get engaged in a regional conflict. We want to deal with Pakistan per se. And I think to that extent, hitting targets in the POK is far more logical.